Man, I really hurt myself today. You only hurt the ones you love. What's that guy do with me? I accidentally banged my hand against the side of a... I was in the sun let me get some coffee, and I guess I knocked my hand accidentally against one of the... the, the, the uh, tables in there. Or the area where you get the coffee. I was like, I was like, wow, like that hurts. And then as the day went on, I was like, noticing that I was, it was, I was in extreme pain. Actually, it seems to calm down though. Do you think you'll be okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. I think I'll sleep on it. Do you want me to call someone to help you? Thank you, Doc. No. And hey, we're at. Welcome to the next episode of the Anime for All podcast, season two. We are continuing on with the, uh, well, at least the finale to the Anna and Yo love backstory. And also, we get a chance to see what's happening present day, finally, after four parts, which they were all good. Every single part was good, and I loved every single uh, bit of it. But I'm glad we're at least we're progressing with story. But I guess as we do that, we're going to talk about the final finale to. Uh, Mount Osori Le Vole. And hit with me is Jock, uh, aka Spurry Magic Helmet. Also, hey. before you do move on, I want to bring up the fact that, uh, How's it going, everybody? based on, you might be listening to this from a different, uh, well, I mean, a lot of you are watching or listening to us through Apple and Google. Well, really that, nice that won't, everybody. that won't change, but the spot where we're hosting this, the, the podcast has changed. I had to make some, executive decisions uh on my end to make this a little bit easier on me uh monetarily so uh nothing should have changed i hope not we will probably see i'll it'll probably take a little bit before uh i guess all the people who will listen to us come back or ever find us again but i guess that's the price i pay for changing in the middle of a month uh it's okay though because even though he's not going to do as much hard work on his side I can still, um, I can still all do all the work I'm doing. Nothing will be changing on my end other than my uh, what's coming coming out of my pocket, which is absolutely nothing now. Right. So he's he's just here to like talk, and if it ever makes money, he's here to make money. But I'll still do all my research and make sure that everything's good for the audience. We're gonna so move. Don't worry, guys. I'm still going to work hard, even if he, even if he's not doing his part. Moving on, we're on a uh, reviewing episode uh, of Shaman King, uh, Shaman King episode 33. I won't abandon you. That's an odd title name. No, that's what I'm saying. I won't abandon him. I won't abandon the audience. Uh, the the audience. summary is short and sweet. Me, I'm very devoted to this audience, and I just need them to know that I'm going to be there for them if they need me. Guys, if you if you ever need somewhere to stay or, um, you know, someone to talk to or just anything, you know what I mean. If you if you're going somewhere and you need to drop your dog off and have someone take care of it, or you know, if you just actually, I think one of the positives here about this new hosting site, I think we can get can responses babysit. now. I can babysit if you need someone to come babysit. I think we can I get. Don't, I just don't want them to feel like they're alone, you know. Oh, they shouldn't. I think we can get responses to this stuff now. I think. What? To these podcast episodes, I think. Either that or because it's, um, I guess whenever an episode does go out, it should get um, tweeted out. We might be able to get uh, responses, I think. I have to work on that. Um, don't, don't copy that. Uh... I'm not copying anything. Oh, these things. Okay, this is what it is. Um, we can actually have polls apparently with these things, and also we can get we can get a. Uh... Oh, we can actually post questions to these things through Spotify. Oh, there's actually quite a few things I didn't know Spotify offered, and now I'm aware that they offer it. So I had to be reminded of this. I guess if you ever have any questions to pose, Jock, for this episode here that we're doing right now. Okay. So yeah, uh, I think I have to ask them then. Is that what you're trying to say? No, I mean if you have any questions you want to answer, and you just remind me, I guess t type it in so I can remind myself to add it into the uh, into the thing. If there is a poll we we want to pose or anything like that. 
Okay. Actually, we could probably even ask who, I guess, what animes people want to watch. Okay, we'll get to that. There's actually a lot of things now that this free site offers that the paid one didn't. Did anyone I, answer my questions from the past? No, uh, no, not really. Uh, and I feel like it has a little, I feel like it has something to do with the fact that um, people are listening probably had no way to respond to a, a vocal I thing. Just, I mean, I just told them I'll be there for them. I offered my house to them if they needed it. I just don't understand why these people can't reciprocate. Okay, I guess with uh, all that out of the way, <laughs> we're just gonna talk about we're gonna talk about anime as a way to make the uh, to make that awkwardness just so, uh, slowly decrease on, on my end of the uh, my end of this. Um, well, now you're the hero. The one that just downgraded the entire service is now the hero. Actually, I upgraded us. Actually, we, there's a lot of things we did not have here that are available to me now. Uh huh. So this yeah. is cool. Yeah, you you should you deserve a medal at this point. I can't mute you. Watch it. You can't mute me. Yes, I can. It's no. called a mutiny for a reason. Uh, okay. Uh, episode thirty three of Shaman King. Uh, I guess a good uh, we could talk about this in general here is the um I guess the overarching strokes here is that uh. The demon that Anna uh, spawned last episode got a power up uh, after running away with her and demoralizing her so much to the point that demons were congregating um, around her. Apparently, when Yo, uh, as Yo was heading up to the, the mountain where the demon is, the old man giving him a ride, uh, Matsumune is kind of giving him his like his his farewell sayonara speech. Uh, we first find out. I was gonna get to that if you just oh. let me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hope. I hope people. I hope. I hope people. I hope people get this as a stick. Did not take anything seriously here? <laughs> uh, so you know that like my the way I'm gonna die some days through like a mob with pitchforks and torches. We both know that, and we just kind of like I'm just leaning into it at this point. Apparently he wants to die with people uh, stepping up pitchforks. I don't want to. I just don't see how it's not going to happen. You could just not be you. <laughs> how do you got it? I gotta be me. Okay. Uh, Matsumune gives his whole spiel about like that he's very low on Furyoku, and right now he doesn't have the ability to take on the demon. Um, and he, the the one thing that keeps on, I guess, the one sentence that keeps on. Uh, I guess pervading those entire four parts is that demons can only kill demons. Uh, meaning Ma uh, Matsumune has got to be the one to attack the demon. We first find out um, this necklace with these claws on him apparently is the medium that was uh, holding um, Matsumune uh, in, in place or keeping him physical because the spell that Howl made is what you know allowing him to be uh, allowing him to have a physical form. Essentially, he says he's got to give all his he's got to give all his Furyoko into making this giant Oversoul, which is a giant blade that is called a Demon Slayer. A little bit on brand, if you say. Let's well, get the demon, yeah. I mean, it's there to kill a demon, so it makes sense that it would be you know the Demon Slayer. Yeah, I find it interesting too. You get a chance to see uh, Yo be a little bit more emotional here. Um, we've very rarely seen Yo display too many emotions. We've seen him display anger. Uh, but here we saw him display sadness and anger. A lot of sadness. Well, I mean, yeah, he was crying. Was he was losing too. his best friend. I mean, yeah, he was. Too. And, like part of the theme of this is that like he, a lot of stuff is over is kind of throwing him. Like he fell in love instantly too. That seemed a little out of character from from what we know later. We kind of see him grow up a little bit, you know, in some ways. That like here he's got love at first sight. He's crying. He's um, he's got other reactions, you know what I mean? He's out of his league at one point, which is something that he's almost incapable of feeling, like he's out of his league in any other situation. Um, I don't know. Even, like, I mean, he's even kind of goofy when he gets slapped, and he's like, oh, for my first slap in the face, you know, and he's like, he's all, like, head over heels about it. Like, that's kind of, kind of fun, but kind of silly too, right? Yeah, I mean, a lot of, I guess a lot of themes here, um, I guess I didn't bring this up about Anna here. I'm just not looking at this. Uh, Anna, like the demon that was feeding off of her, her Furyoku bringing the demons. Apparently, Anna has not, like I guess at this point, even though how young she is, she hasn't depleted her spiritual energy. 
which is odd. I mean, I mean, this is the kind of thing with her. They said that she was really powerful. She has like an, an, an abnormal amount of spirit energy. I guess this is just like feeding into that whole idea for, for whatever reason. You also see that Anna also has a lot of baggage. Um, a, a surprising amount of baggage. Actually, speaking of emotions, she is showing a lot of emotions that she does not display in present day. Um, it's actually very shocking, and I've also kind of felt really bad for her like, here. Like, you know, she even brings it back to like something happened with her mother, something happened with her, her father, something happened to her brother. I didn't know she had a sibling, but apparently she did. Um, so apparently, a lot must have actually happened to her. I guess a lot has to do with the fact that, you know, her emotions bring in demons, and it's probably what actually happened to her, her, um, her uh, family. Uh, Yo does for the first actually in this this is in the past Yo does his first soul integration with Matsumune, which brings out the giant demon slayer, and the, the demon is kind of afraid at this point, wondering where the where the cat went, asking constantly where the cat went, like the, I guess the medium soul, the, I guess the medium soul that he said that was he saw in front of him. Uh, Anna, all, you also bring up here that Anna also is kind of a lot like how here that she's kind of fallen in. I kind of actually kind of curious with here cool, the whole idea that Anna was kind of like how at this point is are they going to try to get like because the, the whole theme here was trying to get Anna to open up her heart. Is that, is, is that what they're going to try to get how to do here in the future? Because it seems like he's too he's too far gone at this point. He doesn't. Oh, I see what you mean. How, do you think they're going to try to save how? Um, it's not impossible. I mean, I feel like the, you'll see in my notes, I mentioned many times that there seems to be this definite pattern in his personality where like he's continuously like showing over and over again how he can convert somebody to the side of good. Like even you're seeing it with <laughs> you're seeing it with um even Lyserg in the second episode, for example, that, like, he, um, Lyserg, there was a moment in an earlier episode where he's like, I can't let him change me, I can't let him turn me around, and he has to kind of fight it, like, actively to, like, make it work at all, like, otherwise he, you almost feel like he would just change, you know what I mean, and become, like, a good guy like the others, like, he really wants to, deep down in his heart, kind of, like, switch over and become one of them, so... I don't know, I you see that moment, you know what I mean, where he's like kind of like resisting it, but he can't quite get over there. But like other characters too, like he's been turning them around little by little, except for like Marco and Iron Maiden, like are just about the only hundred percent holdouts that just don't seem like they're ever gonna change who they are, you know. But even then he found a way to work with them. So it's hard for me to think that um that how changing how might not be the kind of like plot twist that is inevitable here well the only reason i say that is because like i mean even though anna was kind of like how here anna wasn't the real enemy it was the demon that ended up uh forming from her hatred like right and also with the whole idea of demons and p demonic possession and whatnot who's to say that maybe the demon that how ended up manifesting didn't possess him in the process right I mean, I'm not, saying that's po I'm not saying that's what happened, but I'm just saying it's a possibility if Hal really isn't in control, and if Hal was feeling the same, if Hal was feeling the same resentment towards humanity, and feeling betrayed, and it's what led him to his demise to begin with. Um, and, you know, they're saying that her emotions bring power and destruction and whatnot, so her emotions are really powerful. Mm Hal -hmm. is the same way, then, his emotions are really powerful as well. Uh... Funnily enough, we haven't really seen him display many emotions. He seems to be the most laid-back villain I've ever seen in my life. How? Yeah. It sort of fits the whole, um, the motif, though, of, like, the shamans. Like, the better shamans all seem to be kind of serene, don't they? Uh, I mean, what, what about Ren? Ren doesn't seem all that serene. He's one of the better shamans. Yeah, but he's getting as he gets more peace with himself. I feel like he's getting better. Maybe I'm wrong, but you're seeing him like as he gets closer to how like you're seeing him chill out a little more and more as well. 
you know, he's not quite on the same warpath he was on once upon a time. He's got more demons to deal with too. Like he's got far he's farther out, but as he can I bet as he continues to get more powerful he'll also calm down and become a more level character. I, I think if anything, like his attitude might be a sign of him being held back and as he throws it away, like and continues towards the path of good and towards like a more serene path that you'll see his power continue to be unlocked in the process. And at the end of the second episode we watched, he thanked, um, he thanked, uh, Yo, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he thanked them in Chinese. Um. Right. So, I mean, you're starting to see him come around even now. Like, he's making some progress. But he's not mellow, though. <laughs> he's not what? He's not mellow, though. <laughs> he's not, he's not mellowed out. He's mellowing, though. Like, he went from being, um, someone you thought maybe was, like, Yo's complete like nemesis or one of his two nemeses to actually at a point now where he's kind of like a little more chill and friendly and you know kind of like he's still putting on a good show but you now feel like maybe it's a show you know yeah i know but i mean he's still really he's still really not mellowed out i still feel like vegeta is kind of i don't i still feel like vegeta's more mellowed out than like i mean he is like he he isn't like blah blah blah. First of all, Sans as much anymore. You know he's trying to. Think he, he's of, trying... This is this is what I mean. So Vegeta and the Saiyan saga was out to destroy the Earth. You know what I mean? And he was like pretty. He was killing Nappa, his own team member, and stuff like that. Vegeta and the Namek saga was still pretty amped up. But I would say my opinion of the way I would define it is that he was mellowed out by then. That he was kind of like willing to work with the team. And that's where I feel like this guy is. Like he's got he went from kind of like being like, you know, loose cannon like on, on a warpath to willing to work with the team. And his personality might have shown not shown a difference yet, but he's got attachment now. Like he's got affection. He's got some things that like um make him just not quite like all the way over the top no i get i get that and that's we're poking fun and we're trying to poke holes in the rent but uh <laughs> but i guess before we get to that all they're that wearing down. they're wearing him down i mean yeah i get all that i'm just i'm just saying i was just kind of poking holes in Ren, just just for the sake of poking holes um do have quite a bit to say about Ren, actually, especially with his revival, but we'll get to that in a minute, because that's in the present day, or still in the past. But not for too much longer, though. Um, As, like, the fight is happening between the demon and uh, Yo, Yo and him going back and forth, Yo is taking body parts off of him, making him freak out. They have... Uh, hmm? Nothing. What? I didn't say anything. Yo is slight. They said they were taking body parts off him, and I said the hot. That's hot. Yo is slicing and dicing the demon. Uh, <laughs> the demon is getting scared at this point, uh, so much to the point where he's trying to insult uh, Anna to get her to, I guess, get get her back to where she was when he was, uh, you know, when she was hating humanity. And a as as it seems like he's about to win, uh, w with you know reverting Anna back, she says she first turns around and says that her. She may hate humanity, but her love for Yo is stronger. And it was probably the cutest thing she's ever probably, I guess, cutest thing she's ever said in the entire, the entire show. Which is kind of funny, because this is just her in the past. But, um, I guess this is one of the things I was thinking about while I was watching that. I was watching that happen, I was like, this really shows that, like, it makes sense the way Anna treats Yo. Um, she really, really, even though she doesn't show it in the present, really, really depends on Yo to be her rock in a in very, in a very, I guess, in a very, uh, not just spiritual, but like at a very emotional level. She she knows that her emotions are dangerous. And she keeps that, you know, she keeps that face going. But I guess underneath all that, plus we know that she can hear his emotions in his head. Yeah. Uh. It shows that, you know, that she is truly in love with him. As you said before, you know, these two are truly in love with each other. It's a it's a very rare situation. Because um, I've seen anime where they, uh, usually they're not in love with each other or it's one-sided and it takes to the end of the series for that to happen. 
but it's actually refreshing to see it here uh shown that it was there to, uh, to begin with and it nothing changed yeah i agree i think it was nice to see like and it's not just a random like unfounded plot device either like it's actual legitimate oh they really like each other it's not just fabricated because it's convenient for the plot like they get along you know yeah, yeah, it's really refreshing that they, they actually do love each other. And it's actually showing here that, you know, they need each other. On, and this is interesting, Anna really needed Yo, and she's really... And it makes sense that why she's so hard on him to become the Shaman King. He made a promise to her, and he really... And she wants him to, she wants him to keep it. Unfortunately, as we get to the present day, we know that he can't keep... Well, there's... I guess there's a little if and, if and end there, but it sounds like that I don't think he'll be able to keep his promise to her for right now. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, it shows that, you know... It looks like there was like they had this bond that was there from when they were ten years old to when they're twelve or thirteen right now. So it's really cool that you know that actually transcended. And uh, Yo, after that whole confession from Anna, Yo ends up uh, killing the demon with a uh, crescent moon purification, which I don't think he's I've seen he's used that move in the present. So it must be it must be just when he's wielding Montemune, which actually at, after this point Montemune ceases to exist. Or he moves on to the afterlife, though. Yo brings up the fact that he wanted they were to kind of back and forth about that because they're like he was like I moved on to the afterlife and I'll never be back. But then there's other moments where he's like, can I give you your body back? And I well, Matsumoni said Mat like Matsumoni says I think he could, but also you yes, bring out the fact he said that after that he said that you know I, it, it, after the fight happens, my it, it, for certainly my soul would have moved on to the other side to his resting spot. Like nothing is holding him to the nothing is holding him to the world anymore. Maybe the only thing I could justify it with was like if um, maybe while he was the sword he could have been brought back, but once the sword the Furyuki was used up after that, like then it was too late. That was a possible inter interpretation of what was going on. In it's opinion, possible. It was... It's possible that Yo could probably, if he were to become Shaman King, he could take the soul. He could ask the soul to come back, and he could bind his soul to another to another body. Like how how did it? Because I don't know. Like how how did it? Did he did he let the did he let the cat's body die at first and then he made the body or whatever happened there? We don't know the spell that that you know how used to to make him in, make him in the first place. I sort of I sort of think I should have known, but I didn't. Like I got the feeling that like I should if I was a smarter person I would have known what was going on there, but I just didn't get I just couldn't follow it enough. I think basically what I was, uh, what I took from it is the fact that uh, he made it seem like he was gonna disappear. I mean, nothing is ever fully for certain. Suspicion is, you know, dying isn't really the end of anything. It's a possibility souls have come back from the afterlife. I don't think he's stuck there. It's that he can go on there now. He can be free because he can't, he can't physically touch or manifest in the world anymore. It's from what I got from it, he needs somebody to, he needs somebody to ma make him manifest now. Mm -hmm. But Yo wanted to give him a, a, a body so he could just walk around and do his own thing. So I'm pretty sure maybe it, 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 what is to be understood there is that he could, in, in theory, if he knew how to do it, make him another body for him to uh, to exist in. Or make, mm -hmm. give him another spell for him to exist in. But I don't know if Yo can do that. Or if he needs to be as powerful as Howl. Because he mentioned that too, that Howl was really powerful. is one of the reasons why he could do it. He does bring the... Um... To be fair, though, he does bring the um, the necklace with him, which it seems like he has at least hasn't given up hope that he can make this work. Yeah, I say he couldn't. I don't. I, I don't know what. I don't know what the uh, specifications because the during that entire you know exchange between, between each other, how it's brought up, um, and how you just kind of saying how it's just really powerful, and that's the reason why how was able to do so. So I don't know, like I guess what's the difference between Hal and Yo? If there's a if there is something that Yo could do to bridge the gap in power between him and Hal, maybe he could, considering that they're supposed to be there's supposed to be two halves of the same hole anyway. So yeah. there's, I've always had this theory in my mind. There's got to be something to that, you know. There's there's supposed to be two halves of the same hole to begin with. So um, this maybe there's something that Yo can do to bridge the gap. Um, I thought maybe since he said that apparently getting near death is what powers you up. Maybe Yo dying once would probably help him increase the Furyoko amount that he has. Who knows? Right. Who, who knows at this point? 
Um, after all, after the demons been killed, and all the demons have been, you know, all all been killed as well. All the bees that I guess were the mediums for these spirit, demon sprites all land, and the number here is 1080, which is the number that you said I guess comes up a lot when they're explaining in this particular four-part episode. Um, well, 108 were the different number of sins, and 1080 is that times 10, and that's how many spirits um, were feeding that big demon. So it's just interesting that it just seems to be a non-stop theme. Yep, it is. I guess it is odd. But uh, after all that's taken care of, you know, they're having their little uh, resting time. Uh, a couple, I think it's a couple of days pass, and Yo ends up heading, you know, packing up and ready to go back home. Um, he brings the fact that his grandmother wanted him to stay to rest a little bit longer, but he says that, you know, he wants to, he wants to give Anna his, her space because she stuck herself in her room again for a week. Yeah, I was like, "Wow, that she 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 still hasn't changed." Um, Yo ends up going on a train as as he's prepared to, um, you know, he's as he's I guess he's as he's moving as the train's moving, he's his grandmother apparently had given him some like uh, I forgot the name of it, but it's like it's like an envelope thing that typically in, in Japan they uh, attach to trees that grant wishes and whatnot. Matsumoto had made one, and I guess he never got a chance to put it up on a tree. He get a uh, grandma gave it to him, and he was staring at it. And then there's this girl who pop, comes up right behind him, and as he's sitting in the chair, say, "Why don't you open it?" He looks up, and it's Anna. For whatever reason, Anna somehow got onto the train uh, before the train started moving. I-, I was trying to figure out when this happened because it seems really odd. She seems dressed. She seems really well dressed too for this being a random, like a random last minute thing to do. <laughs> At least in my opinion. It looked like she'd completely planned the whole thing out. T- to me, it seemed like, yeah, like she must have been on that train to begin with. Um, and uh, she explains that, you know, that uh, she wants to change. She wants to gain control of her abilities, whether she has them or not, which is cool. So I guess at this point, it shows that, you know, she's, she's she hasn't resigned herself to not, you know, for, to Yo not being Shaman King. But mm-hmm. um, she wants to be able to, I guess, in a case, in the off chance that uh, Yo doesn't become Shaman King. She wants to be able to control her abilities so they don't go out of control again. Um, again, with the whole thing that Anna is really powerful, she's more powerful than most uh, young girls that have her position are. Most like, young girls don't have her spiritual energy, so that's another thing. Uh, as she's about to, I guess as she's explaining all this, she ends up thanking Yo for helping her, you know, slaying her demons and whatnot. Her inner demons. Well, I'm pretty sure she's probably got still plenty of more. Still uh, kind of confused about what was up with that in her um, in her crazy state. Talk about her her family. I'm still wondering if I'm supposed to assume that demons were the reason that her parents died. I uh, don't really know about that. Uh, I, I always want to say that they have to be considering that her emotions are what brings demons in the first place. That's the only thing I can think would have killed her. You know, killed her parents. Um, and she blames the world somehow. But uh, yeah, I think it's about it. Like I mean, she ends up you know, she blushes and thanks Yo for everything, and then uh, the the tra- next train stop she gets off, and Yo is uh is like waving back at her. I guess another comedic thing you bring up that you know the slap, his first slap, uh because Anna can in fact read his memory, his read his mind. He comments that you know she, her her being stubborn is cute. She gets all flustered and well as in anime fashion, and cut away. Or from inside the train, they hear two slaps. Mm-hmm. And then he's got giant, like, red welts on his face, and he's like, Bye, honey! <laughs> She's like, yeah. And he looks, like, half dead. <laughs> but smiling the whole time, too. I mean, he's probably into that. Someone, people got kinks. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry. No, it's a good fetish to have, I suppose. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, that's but at that prince that ends the entire that ends the that ends the entire like uh, well not end, it doesn't end entirely after she gets off and then it's the it's a couple hours later we see what was inside the envelope that uh, Matsumune had it was three poems and we don't see those poems again we hear them mentioned but we don't see those poems again and I I, I guess we're so I guess <laughs> we're probably gonna see the poems at some point I, I guess we're gonna have to see them at some point because they brought they made us aware of Matsumune. Uh they made us aware of it on purpose. So, like, 
he's got to be important or something. I hope. Um, but we now know what happened to him because we haven't seen him in the present day, but we saw him in the past. So we, we now know what happened to him. It was really sad. So I actually did like that character. He was a really interesting random character to put into the show. But I think he he wasn't a waste. I guess is the best way to put it. He wasn't a, he wasn't a waste of a character, even though he he died quote unquote. Uh, he wasn't a waste of a character. Like I I didn't I don't feel like I was cheated. You know, getting to know him here for the amount of time they let us get to know that character. No, I didn't think he was a waste either. I think he's actually super interesting to be honest with you. But um. He's like sort of like almost like an old master and a Pokemon at the same time. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, well, again, this show, the original, the, the the initial manga came out early in the early 2000s. So Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z and all this stuff would have been main, would have been main leaders here. So, I mean. No, I'm, I'm not trying to say that they're copying Pokemon. I just think that like, if... Um, if an old, like a wise old Asian style master was a Pokemon, this is what they'd be like. I get it. I was just saying that. I mean, this was kind of a common thing at the time. Granted, I want to say that uh, a lot, a lot of speaks that I didn't know. I'm pleasantly surprised, and I, I'm actually kind of glad I waited as long as I did to get into this because I've been wanting for years to get around to finally get, getting the real story of Shaman King. And I'm so happy that I'm I'm like I'm able to finally get into it. Like this, yeah. I had I had not been uh, I had not been disappointed. Besides Yo dropping out of the tournament, which I wasn't expecting as a story plot point, but I mean I guess this is kind of the equivalent to Goku dying in a really weird way. You know, they're removing him from the main plot for the time being, on purpose. Yeah. Uh, so you know, yeah. I guess with that, we're gonna end the uh, the four parter. Well, I like to call Anna and Yo's love story, which is essentially what that was. We got a chance to know, we got we got to know more about both of them. Ironically, the show really owned um, the show. I felt really owned how much they loved uh, Matamune. I mean, if you watch the, did you watch through the post credits, like the credit scene? Uh, no, no, I actually didn't. I, I do see it's you mention that apparently you find out that like he likes catnip. But he's a cat, so. <laughs> no, no, no. There's the post credits, but the credits themselves, when they roll, is just like a giant montage of all the things that the show thinks made him great. Like you go through and like they're just like they're kind of like getting sappy about it. Like they're going through and like making it like all seem like very deep and sad that like he's gone and how much we're gonna miss him. Basically, is like sort of like a theme of it, and you. Uh, they just show like some sentimental kind of footage and stuff like that of like how great he was basically so it's sort of interesting from that perspective you know what i mean that you're just like like oh we lost a good dude and like they make it they make him treat him like he's a full character that was like a big deal that they lost you know which i suppose makes sense given that like given that he was uh you know, a thousand years old, and we don't know him that great, but, like, you know, he's still a thousand years old. Um, but, yeah, they treated him like a full, valid, like, completely legit legitimate character. So, I just thought that was an interesting thing to set, that they set some, si some time aside to do, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, just I'm noticing there are some chats. I really need to pay attention to that whole chat bar. I need to do better about that next time. They're not there anymore, but I need to do better about that next time. Okay, okay uh, with, uh, moving on. Well, not moving on, but, you know, again, this the next part, the next episode we're reviewing, which is episode 35? Wait, 34. Yeah, 34. Uh, we actually get jumped right back into present day. Um, we find out apparently what we were watching was uh, a story being told by Yo um, to Amina Mara. So it makes me wonder. I wonder how much of that was embellished <laughs> to make him seem better. <laughs> I want to believe that everything in, that he told was actually just actually how it happened. Because I don't, I can't see Yo making things up like he that. Seem like a bragging type, to be fair. So I want to, I want to believe that everything that was, even, even all the parts that are about Anna were true. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. 
It was kind of cute how he was like, Oh, my master, I feel even more loyal to you now than ever, you know. And he's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, but it was interesting how apparently the entire floor part was just a story of it from Yo's perspective. I was like... Because we cut away from it. We cut away from Anna when it starts. So, like, it's kind of odd that, okay, we find out it's actually Yo telling the story. Or maybe it was Anna at first and then it switched over to Yo. Who knows? Um... He was like, I, I guess I, I, as he like after he, I guess as we're coming to the end of that story, he says like you know, uh, like well I I'm at the tournament now, but I still things I gotta do. Anna shows up behind him. Yo is panicked as is any, I guess male character who's married to a woman or going to be married to a woman is when their wife walks in behind them. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Anna, I, I'm so, so sorry. Cut away and we hear two slaps again. <laughs> What makes this, what makes this even better is the fact that um, she says she's sorry. She she uh, she 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 uh, she's uh, she understands and she does, she's not upset. She forgives him. And she walks out and then Amir Morrow's like, "Oh, yo, master, she forgave you." Turns around and yells, "It is own blood." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a pool of blood. And death. I was like, "Jeez!" I was like, I, I, "All I heard was K O fatality." A hundred percent. I was like, "Jeez, they really lead into that." I think you know, this this anime was a part of was a was a part of like a, a subculture a subculture of uh, mangas that did this, where the woman smacked the main character so hard, even though they really should be able to stand it, withstand it. And they're over there really hurt. They did this to Goku. Um, they did this to somebody in Bleach. They did this a lot in Naruto. It just like for the reason women have very uh, unnatural power scaling when they get angry at a male character. <laughs> And the male characters are terrified of them usually. So it's like you know, they, 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 this is the part of that whole thing. Great to them here. Anna has got a powers. He's got enough spiritual energy in her to, I think, make that believable. So, who knows if that was just done for comedic effect, or he really was in his own blood? Uh, oh, I'm sure it was some combination of both, and not like one or the other. I always wanted to be real because it's like you know, he's just in his own blood. But okay. We cut away from that. Um, we come back. I believe the next thing we see is uh, uh, Tower Ren's corpse um, with an ice red cage on him and uh, the X laws over him. Um, and Maiden, uh, the Maiden, about to revive him. And we have uh, we have Trigon rip off here, uh, saying maybe we should just bury him. Um, this is when we first see a little bit of like Lysurg, I guess, coming around, realizing that this is wrong. You know, they made a promise to Yo. He doesn't say anything. He just kind of sits there, like oh, with his mouth, to, you know, gives his mouth a gape for whatever reason. Just like I'm surprised you don't say anything. thing. Well, he'd uh, just get killed. There's no one to save him. He would just get killed if that happened. I don't know. I feel like maybe he could take Marco. I don't really know. We, I mean, we haven't seen what he's capable of right now. We haven't seen him fight in a while. Yeah. They just, well, I mean, that's what this group tends to do. They just, like, their first choice is to, like, kill something, you know? Like, I really did like Marco at first, and I really don't like him here. Yeah. Not only is he a ripoff of Trigun, a Trigun character. <laughs> he's, not, he's not necessarily a good one, either. Uh, but, uh... Next thing is like Tower Rises from the Dead. Jeez. Okay. Um, I guess the four between <laughs> between the uh between the Rising from the Dead and and, and Rin being revived. Uh, pretty much a lot, a lot of like what Rin's done in the past start comes starts coming up and in, in conversation. And we also see Rin's soul wrestling with what he did in the past. We see him reliving what he did to uh to to the his um his patch member that was responsible for him and uh. We see Ren uh, really regretting what he did and really feeling some serious remorse. It was a very weird kind of character development for him. He's dead and he's reliving all this. And he's regretting every single minute of it. So much so that as he's watching it happen, he's saying, please don't do it. I was like, I said, like, man, like, Ren, you you, man, you, have, you did this. You're going to you gonna have to live with it and come to terms with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I, it's only he's 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 getting he's getting there. You know, he's, it's only he's, get, he's getting there to the point where he's able to come to terms with it. But um, you can tell he's really beating himself up over it. 
Uh, as that's happening, we see also apparently for the reason as well, just to be done for dramatic imagery, we uh, it's Rin's soul as he's do as he's like trying to turn away from the image. You see him upset that you know apparently he saw he saw it all happening. Yo giving up his spot in the Shaman King tournament to revive him. He's upset about this, and for the reason there's there's this image of him like the gun. He, he's like he's holding a gun that's like directly pointed at his head, and I didn't know where it came from. We come back in the real world where everybody's living. Marco's got a gun pointed at his dead corpse body, so I'm guessing for whatever reason he's able to interact with that. For whatever reason, I don't know what's ha what's happening there. It's probably just done for effects. Sure. It, it really caught me off guard because I was like, "Where the heck did the gun come from?" And it looked like the gun that Marco was holding. So Marco's got the gun pointed at his corpse. I guess ready for him, ready for you know Ren to come to life and attack the maiden. Uh, which, by the way, I want to point out that Ren, Ren does not. In fact, actually, when Ren comes back to life, he just says, "Why was? Why did you bring? It was a waste of time, whatever." And Marco gets upset and attacks him. Ren pulls out his sword, defends himself. As this was happening, I was sitting like, "Why did the maiden let this happen?" You know, she seems like such a she seems like a good person compared to everybody else that she surrounds herself with. She's so rude. Even with that, it just seems like she still seems like a good person. <laughs> if you say so, my friend. I think her intentions are good. I guess that's what I said. She's, I think her intentions are good. It's just her way of doing it is... She's pretty selfless. I'll give you that. Morbid. Uh, uh, Let me make it be selfless if you uh, trap yourself inside of an Iron Maiden. Moving on from that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to like scroll through your notes here so I can come up with the thoughts I'm trying to say in my head. Uh, pretty much the Ren needs to get brought back to life. Apparently they bring up, as she's about to do it, she brings up the Sleeping Beauty tale. And as, as this was happening, I was like, okay, who's going to kiss him? Who's going to kiss him? Is it going to be a dude? And at first they make it seem like she was going to be the one to kiss him on the mouth. <laughs> but apparently it was her spirit that did so. As Ryu jumps in through the window, it says, Will you kill me, maiden son, to revive me? I was like, good gracious. <laughs> apparently uh, like Ryu had interrupted the revival. So uh, Ren was brought back to life, but albeit with a scar um, in his chest where he was stabbed. Ryu was pretty thirsty, let's, let's admit it. Let's just come to terms with how thirsty Ryu was in that scene. Well, he doesn't have a girlfriend, so I mean... <laughs> <laughs> For obvious he reasons. Was he was thirsty as all hell. But, uh... I guess with that display of power that R Rin has shown against Marco, he definitely received a, uh, a boost of power. I don't know how by how much, um... It was noticeable enough for Ren to notice that he received an enormous amount of power. So, I mean, whatever. Well, I don't know what like what the boost was in his Fryoku level, but, you know, he got enough that it was it was noticeable. <laughs> this is what it did there. I mean, like, the, the, the X-Laws now have, you know, succeeded in what they're doing. Marco, I don't know what's going on with that man. He's been giving these really strange looks that I'm going to kill you. He's, he's, he's shown the most change in how he used to be to how he is now. For whatever reason, he, I, don't, I don't know. I wouldn't trust him on the Iron Maiden. T to me, it seems like he'd probably try to kill her too if he doesn't, you know, get his way. How do you figure that? When, she, when he was, when he asked her to let him stay dead, he was very upset with her response. To me, that, is, that, isn't, that isn't a response of somebody who worships her. At least not anymore. Yeah, that's fair. You know, if you if there was a person, if if you worship that person, you would re, you respect her wishes, whatever they are, if you don't agree, agree with them. But he didn't agree with her her wishes at all. There, it doesn't like she she has any you know attachment to anybody there, but she's just trying to keep her part of the deal going. She seems she seems to respect deals apparently. That's important, at least. Yeah, she said, she sounds like she, I mean she's all about sex, self sacrifice and idealism and honor and all that stuff. So I'm not surprised that she like held pedantically to it. After all that's been done, uh, we come back to Yo after he's gotten the the phantom slap is what apparently Amir Mara called it. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Uh, Rin walks in. He's like, "What happened to your face?" I was like, "Jeez." <laughs> like he seemed very concerned when he saw his face. It was like, <laughs> I had to talk about how you know how his ideals were like what were right and whatnot. But um, you know, like he he thanks him in Chinese. I think it's she she. I think is what it is. I might have butchered that phrase. Um, but he thanks uh, you know Rin thanks Yo for reviving him in, in Chinese. We see that the scar on his uh, in his chest also reaches to the back on his back where the tattoo was, and apparently because you know it didn't heal they broke the cycle of hatred which is i guess in the form of that tattoo on his back i guess another mm -hmm. form of like ren moving on with his life uh or attempting to move on from what he did he recently also he will also like to make amends but right now he uh the cycle of hatred that i guess was in his family has been broken now which is freaking cool i guess that's a tattoo that cannot be removed unless you take your skin off i guess or put a skin graft on like you've got to love the symbolism of it you know? What? Don't you? You've got to love the symbolism of, like, Yo's, like, act actions, like, leading to the cycle of hate being broken in the sky. I can't ignore it. It's it's too obvious to me. I mean, they, they were always there from the very beginning when he first had his first fight with him. I mean, yeah. you could see that the change was happening and the cycle of hatred was kind of disappearing. So, I mean, I mean Yo it has that effect on people who have hatred you know, he lets them vent their hatred and then they're able to let their hatred go. Yeah, I just think it's super fun that, like, that's what that's what's going on here. That's all. Yeah, no, I mean, I can see it. I just saying, I just saying, like, you know, I, I saw it happening earlier on. I guess I think it's more evident here because of, he died. Yeah, right with the life. Yeah. He got reborn in a way. Um. <laughs> Uh, then at 1304, um, what I want to say here about, I guess, uh, I forgot his name, the black guy, Chuckle Love and the whole cheesecake thing, uh, I think, and I, I've, I've seen this type of, like, quote-unquote humor here, I'm gonna go on the limb and call it humor, um, you're calling this humor. That's I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on the limb out here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go on the limb. And, like this is a a poorly translated joke, because um I think I know I've seen this type of joke done before, where a character says something and then the other character, the joking character, tries to like make a a joke with like using the same syllables or. Like there's a similarity here because of the um the kanji that are used to spell that. Um, I think they're similar. I guess as the joke is like a play on words type of situation. It makes no sense here because it's Japanese being tra being translated to English. Was the biggest problem with Japanese jokes is that they don't work here in the states. Same they thing with American. Japanese should not be allowed to make jokes. I am in no way affiliated with this man. Um. Japan, I would like to be able to walk around your streets one day when COVID is not a thing. I am no, I am not affiliated with this man. I do not know him. I only know how he got into the podcast. He's been here for a while now. Um, I told him to leave. He hasn't done it yet. <laughs> uh, I think that's what this is supposed to be because I know I've seen this similar thing done before because I think there was even a situation in My Hero with that comic dude, it was kind of the same idea as that, you know, same syllables, sound effects and whatnot, you know, think jokes in Japan just don't translate over here well. And because of that, like, you, uh, unless you really studied hardcore in Japanese, you probably would not get that. Unfortunately, I haven't studied a lot. I only, I only, you know, pulling from what I, I'm aware of re uh, when I was reading manga, hardcore back in high school. This was the type of joke that explained a lot. So I'm pretty sure this is what this what this is, but I forgot what he said before he said cheesecake. And you can refresh my memory what he said. Uh, it's 13:04, so we'd have to go to the episode and check. Hang on. But I'm sure that it was nonsense. It like it didn't make any sense whatsoever to me. Again, Japanese joke translated English is not gonna work. It should be illegal. You understand that, right? Hey, cheer up already. 
cheesecake. Yeah, I think there's. It's, it's 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 the um. Cheesecake. Yeah, there's. I think it has something to do with like the uh the, the kanji being almost similar. It, uh, and it's a joke. He's a comedian, and this is like how he, this is like what he does. And comedians in Japan do this a lot, apparently. Um, again, something about uh, Japanese jokes is not translating well, and Jock's gonna say it's illegal, and I'm just gonna move on and not even talk about it. Uh, as this is happening, uh, horror hooligans are like walking away from Chuckle, uh, leaving him alone, and. He walks in his in his disdain for Chuckalo's really poorly translated joke. He ends up seeing the Iceman in trouble from Howl's goons, um, the the big football dude and uh, a Lego guy. Uh, Literally a Lego maniac. Unambiguously. I just tried to accept what was happening here and move on with my life. <laughs> It's just too much with the cheese head thing and then the Lego maniac and this is supposed to be a serious scene and we've got fake Naruto like as the main character of this part. Do I need to mention that there's a there's a like football team as like one of the main enemies here that like are like attacking? As Jock is sorting through all this, um we, the, uh, the two, the Lego guy and the football dude are now are going to beat up on the t uh, ice team here because, you know, they're weaker than them. Apparently their Furioka level combined is 200,000, the Lego dude and the football guy. And um, the ice team apparently collectively is 6,900, which I guess would be nice, but I guess not really. But um, as he mentions, Horror Horo is, you know, going to stand in trying to stop them. But Horror has a situation where he's uh, going through this whole thing in his mind. He brings up his father, um, and very quickly, his father shows up. Because his little sister asked her to. Asked him to. Uh, I want to bring up, too, that the guy... The, the guy is really rude. Uh, for, for a guy that came up to see his son, he was not the nicest of dudes. <laughs> Like I, I was like, how can this man be his father? <laughs> it was my, it was my, ex not my exact wording, but I was like, this guy was a douche. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, he helped him out, you know, showing him that he doesn't need to have a higher Furioka level to defeat these guys, but he could have been nicer about it, you know. Like, if if anything, like that, I mean, it, it was cool that we got a little bit of like. I guess story about like why Horho's the way he is with the whole survival of the fittest thing. Mm -hmm. Um it's because of his father, but apparently his father also was not trying to drill that into his head for him to give up. He was trying to get him to I guess to realize the other ways that he could like I guess compensate for his lack of power. And apparently in this case is to bond with a higher tier spirit um to gain the power because his father has one and apparently the, his father's spirit is the leader of the tribe of spirits that his spirit is from uh, which is intriguing and apparently he's, it's stronger than his which is even weirder to me um, bringing the fact that apparently trying to make an oversoul with somebody of a spirit that's higher tier than you, you you'll lose your mind uh, I wonder if that's true or not I, will, I guess I'll find out here because uh after all that happened, his father beats up on Big Bill over there and sends him on his back after he... As, again, his father is not a nice dude. This man literally saw his son was in trouble and instead of going out there to help him, ends up getting plywood and makes a boat and goes out into the water and just sails away. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know what type He's of person this is. About it. I don't understand this guy. I really don't. Like, he did... Like, I mean, if he was helping, quote-unquote, I don't think it was the best help. Do you think he felt like he just didn't need help? That's probably what it really was, but I just yeah, just didn't like him. So I could care less about what he was trying to do. Will we even see him again, do you think? <sighs> probably not, considering that he, he he's on a boat going home. The only reason I would think you would see him again is if he somehow got lost. Well, it's just like... That's the only reason I think you see him again is he got lost There's somehow. There's a lot of work to build a character that they're not going to do anything else with. 
I feel like they're mostly trying to work Hor Horo's power up into this. Is really what they were trying to do, and I guess they used his father as a way to do so. We can probably see him again. Like I said before, I mean, the only way I could see them bring his father back in for something is if like um, either Mikasa knew him by some really weird chance, or um, for whatever reason his father got lost. Uh, from whatever they're from whatever village they're from, who knows? I mean, he could just be like a. He could be one of those people who just has really bad directions and comically shows up at very uh, inconvenient and sometimes convenient times. Yeah. Who knows? Like, you know, like, like I said before, just like, he, he's on a raft sailing away from the fight. So, like, I was like, if he does show up, it, it, it'd be really weird. I feel like he's gonna show up. I feel like we're gonna have, like, super convoluted reasons that he shows up that are just like absurd and then that's what's going to be behind it all I mean again he might just get lost and just somehow ends up rafting himself back to the tournament I mean couldn't you see it like what are you doing here and then he comes up with some bizarre reason you know I guess I mean his reasoning for showing up anyway was because uh you know his daughter asked him to I was like yeah, okay the direction this is going right now I could he could They'd be like, what are you doing back here? I thought you left. And you'd be like, I forgot my car keys. And you're like, for a raft? You know. And you're like, yeah, I got all the way back to the States and went to get in my car and it was... Whereas you didn't have my keys, I had to row back. Also, Horror Horse Father's Furioku is 5,000. Um, I don't know how much Furioku his spirit has, but it's definitely higher than his and it was enough to knock Big Bill on his back and scare the Lego Man to death. And we also over nine thousand. More than likely. Uh, and uh, as this is happening, the uh, the um, that Lego dude is now terrified. He drops all his Legos. <laughs> I mean, all of them. And we see apparently he's wearing a yellow bag over his his face is and that torso. Equivalent of shitting your pants. I guess. Uh, he he uh, We see that he, apparently he's a torso and a head. And his spiritual power is what's keeping the Legos on his body for him to be able to move around. Um, we also see that um, if you have to look really close to the Legos that he's using to make the T-Rex, Hal's name is plastered all over them. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure Hal really? made those things. It's the only reason why those things can probably be used with the way they are right now. They were made by Hal. <laughs> So if you were to ask him how were they made, he'd say how? Why do you do this to me? <laughs> Every good hero needs a nemesis. What are you in this scenario? The nemesis. You're I guess... the heroic podcaster trying to make good content, and I'm the troll nemesis that destroys the world. Uh, with, with the Lego T Rex in uh, in, in first when I pursue, but in, in, in being made uh, essentially, uh, Horror Ho says that he's gonna like I guess he's gonna take him on, and because apparently the spirit allies of Team Ice are now on his side. I don't know when this happened. It, it was a fast transition, and I'm actually kind of curious what's gonna happen now. Unfortunately, they decided to cut the episode off there. And I'm very upset, because that episode was going to be cool if they were allowed to, they allowed him to fight in that same episode. The episode was going to be cool, what? The episode was going to be cool if they allowed him to fight in that same episode that he was looking really, like, that he was about to, like, I guess, like he was about to win. Unfortunately, they cliffhanged it, and I hate when they do that. If I'd known, I could have just included a third episode, but we didn't know. I mean, no, we of course we didn't know. But I mean, this is fine. I just like, I hate when he do this. I mean, I guess something to look forward to, to to watch next time. So I mean, I can't wait to yeah. see whatever happens here. If the whole thing wasn't so silly, I guess I'd be more upset. But this was like one of the silliest things I've ever seen in anime. You sir, I haven't watched a lot of anime. Like spiraled into like ridiculous silliness right around the cheese thing
Listen, he's a he's a comedian, and I'm pretty sure the next episode probably is going to be revolving around him and his power up, whatever that's going to be. I think we're going to trend towards a theme of finding ways to be strong that don't necessarily involve Priyoku. And it makes sense because right now, like I mean, House Priyoku is like the highest of the entire show. So they gotta find some way to compensate for that. Right. I think that's what we're gonna learn. Is like everyone's learning about their powers, they're learning about techniques, they're learning about spirits. There's all these different pathways to power. Reincarnation, getting a better spirit, um, finding new techniques and lost techniques and things like that. And consuming other people's spirits and feeding them to your spirit. Now you have spirit allies. There's been undead, there's been the attitude that you come in with, you know what I mean? Not letting, it, like, your atti bad attitude kill your spirit. Mm -hmm. I think we're just going to keep finding new quote-unquote techniques that aren't really techniques. The biggest thing about this one is it's, like, a drastically new technique, you know? I guess that really a technique is more just like, okay, well, apparently a spirit can, can be strong enough for you to be able to um, blast past a, a more difficult opponent, which is freaking cool, which I guess Yo must have known about this, which is why he doesn't seem all that concerned. Mm -hmm. I wonder, at the whole Mata and Mune are returning characters, I wonder if, like, Mata and Mune is going to make an appearance. Because it seems kind of odd that Yo would bring him up now. When he could have like brought him up like twenty episodes ago, and it seems kind of odd that he brings him up now. Like, uh, and he's wearing the necklace that was his medium. So, um, it is possible maybe one of the moon is actually around, and we just don't know it yet. I mean, that necklace right now is almost like Han Solo's dice. Explain. Have you watched the new Star Wars movies? I've watched uh, the trilogy. I've watched the first two. I have not watched the re the last one of that one, and I plan to at some point. I just haven't gotten around to it. Do you watch you watch the prequels? You at least watch the originals and the first two of the new ones, right? I believe I have, yes. Okay. So, in... The original trilogy, there's a pair of dice that you just sort of see on the Millennium Falcon. Nobody really talks about them, they're just there. Nobody ever talks about them. And they become, like, a central point in the episode, like, the third of the new episodes. Episode 9. And it's just like... The random thing that became extremely important that you just thought was kind of there. And the... The new canon from the old canon that nobody ever asked for or wanted. Except in this case, they pull it off. That's not a crazy idea. And I'm gonna end, I'm gonna end the podcast off on this crazy idea. Um, sure. So, the medium... So basically, like the medium that he had used with Matamune was that necklace, and he had over he he pretty much made a giant oversoul on that necklace. Um, what would happen if he were to use the medium on a Mitamaru? Like it's a me Mitamaru. <sighs> Why, Jock? Why? I was trying. I was trying to give some. Get, I guess give some thought to that. And then he just run. He just runs with it and turns it into a joke. And I'll let it happen. Who's me tomorrow? I meet tomorrow. Did you mean Madam Mooney? Oh. 
Oh, I'm sorry, you mean his regular oversoul. I don't think that's how that works. I think it has to be something connected to the oversoul. I've never seen something not connected to the oversoul, have you? Uh, that snowboard that Hoa Hora uses on that, uh, on his mini spirit, I don't think she has anything to do with snow. She looks more like a leaf sprite than anything else. I don't think I don't think it I don't think it needs to be I don't think it needs to be connected to because I don't think the sword I think the sword that that's attached to Amita Morrow's past has already been broken. I don't think that's the sword that Yo's using right now. I mean, unless it is. I thought it was broken a few times and they just keep fixing it. I feel like it shouldn't matter because it's not like because it like it's kind of becoming an ongoing joke. It's, it's like it's not like that. Uh, it's not like that sword because like uh, Rin has a sword that I don't think has any attachment to ba uh, to Bison, but he uses it with him. I think the thing that has attachment to Bison is that uh, is that is that pole staff that he has. I don't think Bison's ever used a sword at all in his past that they bring him up on bring him up on. But is that his me is that really his medium though? It, 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 it's a me it's a medium because it, it's it, it's what allows um it allows him to use the shaman powers that's all that that's all a medium is right but how do you know that that's what allows him to do it we've been tricked before like with the uh i know it is because he's never the, the attacks that he uses with that sword he he doesn't use those attacks when he uses he's just the long stuff the, the long stuff a pole he's never used them mm-hmm he uses specific attacks when he's using the uh, the pole staff, and he uses other attacks when he's using the uh, the um the, that like that wooden sword thing that he's got. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe impossible for him to put Amita Mara into that thing, but it seems kind of odd that like I can't really imagine like because I don't think if he were to pull if he were to pull Madamuni out of the afterlife, I don't know what that would do for him. Would he be the talking cat, or would he just be the cat that died that couldn't speak? I feel like, I feel like the way Mansa Mooney was is because of the spell. I could be completely wrong, but um, I can't really imagine like what that would do for him to pull him out of there. So my theory is that maybe he can use a Mitamaru in that thing, because all that really all that all that, all that medium necklace did was just make a giant sword. Who's to say that maybe Amita Mara has doesn't have enough power? Because they, they bring up that Amita Mara's pretty old too, not like a thousand years old, but I mean they bring up that he's pretty he's pretty old and he and he's beginning stronger the longer he's been with Yo anyway. Can they tell us how old it was? Wasn't it four hundred years or two hundred years or something? That Amita Mara. Mm-hmm. Uh... They do tell us how long he's been waiting. In the early episodes, how long he's been hanging around is almost like an ongoing joke. 600 years old. Mm -hmm. So older than the penis spirits, not as old as the cat. I mean, yeah, 4,000 years younger. I mean, 400, 400 years younger, geez. Mm -hmm. It makes him a respectable spirit, although... It seemed like a thousand years was like some sort of turning point. Uh, Minamara's, uh, Fioku is 30,000. Probably not right now. I mean, if it is 30,000, that's not a lot. I mean, like, compared to how. Compared to how it's like that, that's not a lot, <laughs> but um, so I don't I don't know what that necklace is specifically for. I mean, yeah, it was at the time it was used to you know it was a medium to keep him a, um to keep him physically on the planet so he can walk around and touch things and eat. That was the only reason why he could do it because no ghost is actually this entire series we have not seen a ghost actually partake in food or of any kind, not once. The only ghost we've ever seen that all oh, seen do that is a is a is Montemuni, and and that was just like back when he was uh, still around. Even Montemuni being a ghost could still be using Oversoul, which still confuses me. 
Oh. Didn't that uh, bone dog eat something? No? I don't think he spit him anything. I somehow remember the bone dog eating something. It's not a Franken leaning, right? Or at least chewing on a bone or something, which is, could be just more out of habit than, than obtaining food. I mean, I don't see any images of him actually chewing on anything. Maybe I'm wrong. It's more speculation than anything, but I thought... I mean, I would never have looked at that point in the anime, do you know what I mean? To think I should be watching for someone to eat something. But I sort of have this vague memory of there being something eaten. Hey, maybe, maybe, maybe you, I mean, you could be right. Thing. Maybe he was chewing something, but I don't think if he was chewing something, that doesn't mean he was eating it. I wouldn't mind if someone has left something about that in the comments. Did the dog ever eat anything, if you knew or do you remember? Letting us know. I guess a happened. better question was, has there ever been a ghost besides Montemoni up to this point that has interacted with the physical realm? Because they do bring up the fact that, Yo brings the fact that Montemoni has been sleeping, he's been eating, he's been taking baths. These are not normal behaviors of ghosts that he's seen up to this point. Yeah. I'd be interested in people saying anything about that because I thought there was some like kind of gray area at least. But I can't say where. They've been offered food before. I know Amita, they offered food to Minamaro, but Yo ate it because Minamaro can't eat. He doesn't need to eat. Being 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 dead and all. But um I guess with that, I guess we're gonna end it off here. Um this is the this is like Next to last podcast before Christmas. We'll be back next week for, uh, I guess, catching up before the new year. And uh, hope to see you guys there. And um, see you guys then, then, because we'll be episodes 36 and 37, I believe. Wait, no. No, 35, 36. And what do you do? Do not go in the graveyard at night. Do you regret if you